as the conflict in Ukraine continues and as we watch the situation in the Middle East continue to escalate, I want to remind people that the United States is busy in the Asia Pacific region trying to provoke war there as well. And they're using the exact same strategy they've used for Eastern Europe and the Middle East. They have a proxy or a, a number of proxies that they are militarizing and encouraging to find conflict with China, uh, despite it being at the absolute expense of these proxies and their best interests. I wrote an article about this for New Eastern Outlook. It is right here. It is titled, Washington's Political Capture of the Philippines, a former colony, a future proxy. And a lot of people don't realize this. As the United States warns the world that the Philippines, their sovereignty is being trampled by China, a complete fabrication. It was actually the United States who invaded, colonized, uh, brutalized the people of the Philippines. And even when they gained their independence in 1945, the U.S. Uh, continued asserting itself upon the, the people of the Philippines, their government, uh, maintaining a military presence there to this very day and shaping the Philippines, their foreign and domestic policy, uh, for the benefit of Washington, again, at the expense of every single person there in the Philippines. So let me read through this article in case there's people out there who don't feel like reading it themselves. And as I always do, I will show you uh, the links, my sources that I'm citing in this article, and I will give you additional context when and if necessary. So let us begin. Tensions continue to grow in the Asia Pacific region and more specifically in the South China Sea, where China faces off against the United States and its collection of regional proxies, including Japan and Australia. Australia, look at a map of the world. Australia is not even in the same hemisphere as China is south of the equator, basically an ocean away. While the U.S. claims these growing tensions stem from China's desire to undermine freedom of navigation and stability in the region, it is instead part of a decades-long U.S. policy of containing China. As the U.S. continues to implement this policy, the prospects of a Ukraine-style conflict by proxy erupting in the Asia-Pacific region grow. And we're talking about not just between Taiwan and the rest of China, but now also the Philippines getting heavily entangled in this, what is ultimately uh, the U.S. encroaching on China right along its shores. The U.S. seeks to control Asia Pacific, not protect it. In U.S. State Department documents from as far back as the 1960s, it is admitted that America's military presence in Asia is maintained in support of a long-run United States policy to contain communist China. And of course, I'm referring to this document here. Office of the Historian. This is draft mem memorandum from Secretary of Defense McNamara to President Johnson dated 1965. Courses of action in Vietnam. And it's talking about how the, the U.S. involvement in Vietnam is ultimately part of a wider effort to contain China itself. These same documents admit that the U.S. maintains three fronts to contain China, including A, the Japan-Korea front, B, the India-Pakistan front, and C, the Southeast Asia front, which the Philippines is a part of. Washington currently maintains tens of thousands of troops along the Japan-Korea front, where we can see the U.S. maintains a network of military facilities across both countries. Tens of thousands of U.S. troops are based there, often against the will of the actual population. But the, the governments in power are subordinated to the United States. They don't care what their own people want or need. They only care about what Washington tells them to do. Along the India-Pakistan front, the U.S. has attempted to undermine Chinese-Pakistani ties through the backing of armed separatists in Baluchistan province, targeting infrastructure projects of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC, all while the U.S. courts India as part of its anti-China Quad alliance, which has not really been working out all that well. 
but uh, I have written articles about this in the past. I've done a video on this recently. Suicide bombing in Pakistan is part of US proxy war with China. And yes, I know I'm citing my own article, but if you look through this article, you will see uh, my sources are all listed here. Associated Press, uh, here is uh, a, re a resolution proposed to the US Congress. Uh, so I, I back up all of these claims with primary sources from across the Western media, U.S. government documents, uh, op-eds by, sit at, at the time, sitting U.S. congressmen. Along the Southeast Asia front, the U.S. has attempted to build up and install into power anti-Chinese political parties. In Myanmar, the U.S. is backing an arms conflict, attempting to overthrow the China-friendly government and replace it with a U.S. client regime. But at the very center of the current and growing tensions between the U.S. and China is the Southeast Asian state of the Philippines. And before I move on to that, I just want to show you these other articles that I've written. U.S. meddling in Thai elections, seeking to create an anti-China proxy. And I go through here and I quote uh, members of the U.S.-backed opposition here in Thailand openly opposing any sort of cooperation with China. And here I go through all of the details of U.S. involvement in the ongoing conflict in Myanmar. There's a, a, a mountain of evidence and I cite it all throughout that article. And the links to all of these articles will be in the video description below. Far from supporting the Philippines, and if you, if you look at the State Department's official website, this is from March 5th, 2024, U.S. support for the Philippines and the South China Sea. And they talk about how they claim they're protecting the Philippines against uh, China's aggression, uh, its obstruction of freedom of navigation but let's just get into what this is actually all really about so far from supporting the philippines washington fully intends to pit the nation against china at the full expense of the philippines own best interests which is exactly what the u.s is doing with ukraine at the moment while china stands as the philippines largest and most important trade partner and manila's best prospect for developing badly needed modern infrastructure Washington would have Filipino public funds diverted instead to military spending, fueling tensions that will jeopardize trade and infrastructure cooperation with China. Instead of Chinese built roads, rail, ports, hospitals, and schools amid growing bilateral trade, the archipelago nation will instead invest in ships, warplanes, and military facilities to host U.S. troops. Like Ukraine and Eastern Europe, the Philippines will watch its economy spiral as public time, money, energy, and attention is increasingly invested into a growing proxy conflict orchestrated by and for Washington. The Philippines, already tragically lagging behind the rest of ASEAN, will see the gap in economic power and development widen even further after the next decade if Washington's political capture of Manila continues. And look at the Philippines and how it ranks within other nations in Southeast Asia. It has a much larger population than, say, Thailand. Thailand has a larger GDP than the Philippines. How is that possible? Because the Philippines is not allowed to develop. The U.S. has maintained pressure on it ever since it gained independence in 1945, has divided the public. There are, at times armed insurrections in parts of the Philippines. And it has to a great extent, the U.S. has to a great extent tried to do this all across Southeast Asia with varying degrees of success, but it has been particularly effective in the Philippines. And I think that's owed to just the length of time the U.S. Uh, has been in the Philippines, including as a colonial master. The Philippines, a former colony, not a friend. It is important to understand that while the U.S. State Department talks about support for the Philippines in the South China Sea and helping to protect lawful Philippine maritime operations against a dangerous China, it was the United States that had in fact invaded, occupied, and colonized the Philippines. During America's colonial rule, the people of the Philippines were brutalized and exploited. The U.S. State Department on its own website uh, this is a web page titled The Philippine-American War, 1899-1902. That is here. Again, uh, directly from state.gov. 
this is what it says. After its defeat in the Spanish-American War of 1898, Spain ceded its longstanding colony of the Philippines to the United States in the Treaty of Paris. The ensuing Philippine-American War lasted three years and resulted in the death of over 4,200 American and over 20,000 Filipino combatants. As many as 200,000 Filipino civilians died from violence, famine, and disease. The U.S. State Department's Office of the Historian also admits U.S. forces at time burned villages, implemented civilian uh, reconcentration policies, and employed torture on suspected guerrillas. So all, all of the things the U.S. warns the world that China is going to do uh, if they're not contained, the U.S. has already been doing for generations. Just, just keep that in mind. The Philippines gained independence only in 1945, but has since been subject to long-standing efforts by Washington to reassert influence over the country, including through the basing of U.S. military forces and now Washington's overt use of the Philippines as a proxy in its policy of confronting and containing China. The exploitation of impoverished Filipinos by the U.S. continued long after gaining independence, including specifically on U.S. bases in the Philippines itself. The nation, in a 2023 article titled Preparing for War in the South China Sea, would admit that is this article right here. Okay, again, the link is in the video description below. Activists say they are troubled by the fact that when the United States employed tens of thousands of Filipinos at Clark and Subic Bay bases, those workers faced exploitation and wage discrimination, a dynamic intensified by U.S. assertions that it could override Philippine labor law. So shades of colonialism enduring long after the Philippines supposedly got their independence. They're forced to sign agreements with the U.S. regarding the basing of U.S. troops within their sovereign territory, and the U.S. is given full control over those forces. The Philippines has no say, or very little to negligible say. The same article noted how even as the U.S. begins to expand its military presence in the Philippines today, damage done to the population and environment from previous decades of military occupation has yet to be rectified. Now, let's talk about the U.S. fabricating a pretext to justify its military presence in the Philippines and elsewhere across the Asia Pacific region. While the Western media attempts to convince the global public that China represents a unique threat to maritime freedom of navigation and territorial claims in the South China Sea, the region is in fact the site of multiple overlapping maritime claims, resulting in long standing disputes, not just between various Southeast Asian claimants and China, but also among each other. The disputes can at times escalate in spectacular fashion. Let's take a look at these articles that, that I'm about to cite here. Here's one from The Star. This was from 2023, so just last year. And they're talking about how uh, this agency, the Malaysia Maritime Enforcement Agency, disposes of seven seas to Vietnamese boats. Here's another article from VN Express. This was all the way back in 2018. Indonesia sinks 86 Vietnamese fishing boats. You can see it's on fire. Uh, they burn these boats. They blow them up with explosives. Obviously, there's nobody on board. They they detain the crews. They deport them back to their home country. It, it can become very heated at times. Uh, I will explain here. So the Star, a Malaysian media platform in a 2023 article that I just showed you, uh, and the Vietnamese media platform VN Express in a 2018 article illustrates not only that maritime disputes exist among Southeast Asian nations and have spanned many years, but that these disputes involve confrontations at sea, resulting in detained crews, seized vessels, and even the sinking of such vessels. Despite the seemingly severe nature of these confrontations, bilateral and regional diplomatic relations, trade and cooperation continue on good and growing terms. In other words, while these disputes exist, competing claimants value and benefit from regional stability more than escalating these specific disputes. The economic and political value of any one claimant resolving these disputes decisively in their favor is negligible compared to the benefits of continued stability and cooperation with other claimants, including China. 
The United States has crossed the entire Pacific Ocean to insert itself into these otherwise ordinary and common disputes and escalate them into a regional or even global conflict. The US and its allies, including Australia and Japan, are using this as a pretext to militarize the Philippines and back it in a confrontation with China in an attempt to dangerously disrupt the status quo surrounding these existing disputes done at the expense of not only the Philippines relations with China, but at the expense of regional stability. When I say the US inserts itself into these conflicts, that's, that is what I mean. People might remember this international, so-called international court ruling on the South China Sea in favor of the Philippines. It, it was a, an American law firm that brought this to some kangaroo court in The Hague that has no jurisdiction and has no means of enforcing any of its rulings. It was entirely organized by the United States. And at the time, it was President uh, Duterte who wanted to resolve maritime disputes with China bilaterally, like the Philippines does with every other nation it has maritime disputes with, and it has many maritime disputes uh, with other nations. Uh, he wanted to resolve it bilaterally, and he told the United States he wasn't interested in the outcome of this show trial that the US put together and did so with an American law firm, not a Filipino law firm. Just to give you an idea of how artificial this is and how it's entirely driven by the United States for the United States at the expense of these nations it's supposedly supporting and their constructive relations with China. According to Harvard University's Atlas of Economic Complexity, as of 2021, China represented the Philippines' largest export market at around 33% versus the U.S. at 14.5%, Japan at 11%, and Australia at less than 1%. Even combined, the anti-China AUKUS alliance together with Japan represent a smaller export market for the Philippines. So does it make sense for the Philippines to join together with AUKUS against China? No, no, it doesn't. But it takes a client regime disinterested in the Philippines' best interests to allow this to take place anyway. The Philippines counts China as its largest source of imports as well at 35%, while again, AUKUS plus Japan combined account for less than 16%, less, less than half. And uh, again, the link uh, to this is in the video description below. This is imports to the Philippines. You can see China right here is larger than North America, Europe, and uh, Australia combined. And then in terms of exports, which is very important for the Philippine uh, economy, China and Hong Kong, obviously you add them together because Hong Kong is part of China. And you can see again, it, it's, it's much larger. Look at all of this green. Uh, that is Asia Pacific where the Philippines does the vast majority of its business, allowing the U.S. to use it as a proxy against China to, to not only create a conflict with China, but to destabilize the entire region. That is going to destroy the economy of everyone in the region, including the Philippines. So I, I hope people can see how the U.S. is doing to the Philippines exactly what it did to Ukraine, not just Ukraine, but all of Europe in this proxy war it's fighting with Russia. It is a replay. And that's what I talk about in the article. I say it is also important to consider the majority of the Philippines trade is conducted across Asia. Therefore, in addition to sabotaging trade with China directly, a regional conflict would impact and undermine the Philippines trade with the rest of Asia, just like the ongoing conflict in Ukraine has undermined both Ukraine's own economy and Europe's economy as a whole. Just as the U.S. did to Ukraine upon its political capture by Washington in 2014, there are no viable alternatives offered for the Philippines to replace the amount of economic cooperation taking place between it and China as it eagerly ex escalates toward conflict with Beijing. If tensions continue to grow and economic ties begin to unravel, the Philippines, like Ukraine, will simply shed economic prosperity while diverting what little wealth it has into increased military spending. The notion that China poses a genuine threat to the Philippines based on long-standing ongoing maritime disputes, which also exist worldwide, even in, including in Europe, 
Do we remember the UK and France fighting over fishing waters and their respective navies getting involved? Do we remember that? Did it result in war? Was that even a possibility? No, it happens time to time uh, between all nations that have claims and many times overlapping claims over different parts of the seas. It can be resolved bilaterally and overall bilateral ties remain strong and positive. And, and the US comes in to de deliberately escalate these disputes into conflict. So the notion that China poses a genuine threat to the Philippines based on longstanding ongoing maritime disputes is a fabricated pretext for a vast regional military buildup led by the United States in an attempt to contain China. The notion that China is threatening trade and navigation in the South China Sea is also a fabricated pretext. The vast majority of all maritime shipping transiting the South China Sea is either coming from or going to China, including to and from nations like the Philippines, according to the U.S. government-funded Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, in a study titled, How Much Trade Transits the South China Sea? And that is this study right here. And they have a lot of very useful uh, graphs and diagrams. And you can see this giant red dot, 26%. 26% uh, of all exports going through the South China Sea are from China. And where are they going? You see all these other very big dots? Guess who all of their uh, biggest trade partner is? It's China. So all of this trade going through the South China Sea is going to and from China primarily. And so is the U.S. really protecting the South China Sea from China? Or do they realize that in order to contain China, strangling its maritime trade is key. And this is why they want a military presence in and around the South China Sea. I think it's quite obvious that that's what they're doing. More than a quarter of all shipping through the South China Sea consists of Chinese exports. Other regional nations moving exports through the South China Sea count China as their largest, uh, one of their largest or their largest trade partners, meaning that much of these exports are likely headed to China itself. Here is revealed the true purpose of a U.S. military buildup in and around the South China Sea, threatening, interfering with, and possibly even interdicting Chinese maritime trade all as part of a wider effort to contain China. An additional benefit of this policy is the sabotaging of other regional economies, creating a weaker Asia the U.S. is better able to maintain primacy over. Because as you notice, U.S. control, influence, and the presence of U.S. troops in these countries, the Philippines, Japan, South Korea, this is always done at the expense of these countries. And you may say, well, South Korea and Japan are doing well. Well, imagine how much better they would be doing if they were allowed to dictate their own foreign policy, to trade with whoever they wanted. Uh, you could even see, if you pay attention closely enough, that US-led initiatives to isolate China economically are opposed by the governments of South Korea and Japan as servile, and obedient as they are, they are protesting the U.S., especially in regards to semiconductors, because South Korea and Japan both have manufacturing facilities inside China. China is a huge market for semiconductors. They don't want to close themselves off to. As is often the case, the U.S. pursues a policy in reality diametrically opposed to the fictional policies it publicly announces. The U.S. is supposedly involved in protecting maritime trade of nations like the Philippines through the South China Sea from China, the very nation the Philippines is trading with the most. The price the Philippines is paying for Washington to protect it from Chinese aggression and encroachment taking place in fiction is the very real surrender of Filipino sovereignty, territory, foreign policy, and economic prospects to Washington, just as happened to Ukraine from 2014 onward. Only time will tell how long the Philippines will spiral down into the socio-political and economic black hole Washington has opened beneath it. But as Ukraine has demonstrated, the longer the Philippines spirals towards it, the harder it will be to avert the inevitability of disappearing into it entirely. And that's where I end the article. I think people can see the similarities between what the U.S. is doing to the Philippines and what the U.S. did to Ukraine. And we see how Ukraine eventually created a threat right on Russia's border that Russia could no longer ignore. The U.S. 
did this deliberately, knowing uh, Russia would be compelled to intervene directly against Ukraine. And the U.S. is creating the same scenario here in Asia Pacific, not just with the Philippines, but also Taiwan, which is actually uh, rec internationally recognized as part of China. The U.S. has troops literally on Taiwan, a part of China. Uh, so you can see how the U.S. is creating the same situation for China that it did for Russia. You can see how the U.S. continuously escalated, giving Russia no choice, and they're doing the very same to China. China is attempting to avoid it at all costs. They're also preparing for the inevitability of eventually having to intervene. It will be in entirely at the expense of the Philippines, also the people living in Taiwan under a U.S. client regime. It will also be at the expense of peace, stability, and prosperity across all of Asia Pacific. This is why it's so important for people to wake up to what is happening. Uh, governments in this region, say here in Thailand, uh, they need to face the reality of what the U.S. is doing. Doing nothing, just like Europe did nothing as the U.S., or, or worse, aiding and abetting what the U.S. was doing, say, in Ukraine, prepared the way for catastrophe for all of Europe in the future. And all, all of Europe now is suffering. All of Southeast Asia will suffer if this continues. If the region tries to ignore it, or worse yet, uh, aids and abets it, even if only in the slightest way, it is something that the region must demand the U.S. put an end to, to protect peace, stability, and prosperity. Asia Pacific should be so much further along. Think about the vast amount of resources every country in the region is spending either on working against uh, U.S. attempts to destabilize their country or, say, China having to build up a massive military to protect itself against U.S. encroachment all along their shores and even within their borders uh, in, say, Taiwan, for example. I will keep an eye on this just as I am keeping an eye on the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and the escalation in the Middle East. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Please check again the video description below for all the places you can find and follow my work as well as all of these links that I referenced in this video. There are also ways uh, for you to help support my work. I do not monetize my YouTube channel or any of my other social media platforms. If ads pop up, feel free to skip them. If you do want to help support my work, please do so through buying me a coffee and also Patreon to everyone who has been helping out, whether it's a one-time donation, donations month to month, or even if you have no money to spare and you're just helping share my work with others, all of that is greatly appreciated. That is what makes this work possible. So thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.